and you're very welcome back. It's Care FM Live 106 to 106.3 FM. I'm Peter Murphy. And there you had uh, Bridge of Wonder, a song for O'Brien's Bridge. It's a new release, Austin Jurek's new song, and it's uh, been released to mark uh, the, the Pride of Place competition, which O'Brien's Bridge Village had been selected to uh, for 2005. The launch of the CD, once again, tonight, half nine, in the Old Mill Bar. Uh, make sure you go along. It's going to be a great night there. And uh, a reminder as well for your followers of... Uh, it's a wonderful place to live, really. I came here to this area about 15 years ago to live here, but my... Association with the village goes back much further than that. I worked in my early years as a bus driver and I used to travel through the village here. And I have a great love for the place and the people living in the village here are wonderful people, great neighbours, great pride in their, their area. We're right on the lower Shannon here and uh, it's, it's a terrific place to live. Many of the people who are living in the village here today have lived here for all of their lives, of course. O'Brien's Bridge is unique in every year, in, in every respect. It's one of the few villages that has survived on the Lower Shannon today, and uh, it, it's unique because of its, it, its uh, link with many of our, our, Ireland's greatest historical uh, features, like the, the William White Wars. The, the present stone bridge was built in 1690, or shortly after 1690, during the William White Wars, when the William White soldiers and the Jacobite soldiers fought on both sides of the Shannon here. So it would be very important from that point of view. We all have pride in, in our community and in our village and we know how important the river is to us. Um, the river today is, is much more passive and much more subdued than it was in pre-Shannon scheme days. For example, two thirds of the Shannon has been siphoned off to feed the power station at Arnacrusha. So we would have, in winter time especially, we would have raging water, um, very proud and determined flowing down through the village. But now, as I said, it's much, much smoother and it maybe adds to the tranquility of the village. When the Shannon scheme was built, of course, uh, due to the, the change in the, the structure of the river and the course of the river, uh, O'Brien's Bridge in fact became an island, which it basically is today. And looking at O'Brien's Bridge uh, from an aerial uh, point of view, you, you, you'll actually see how O'Brien's Bridge is now cut off on all sides as a result of the Shannon scheme. Well, here behind us you have the power station at Halna Krusha which was built during the Shannon Scheme from 1926 until 1929. The whole scheme took four years to build and there was 5,000 people employed and uh, the cost was approximately five million pounds. The Shannon Scheme started, the first structure was a building of a, a weir at just a mile and a half above O'Brien's Bridge and then a seven and a half mile canal as far as Arna Krusha. At Arna Krusha, a power station was built and then from the power station to rejoin the old Shannon a tail race had to be built for a mile and a half. So the whole project covered over 10 miles. I suppose the Shannon scheme was the biggest undertaken ever in this country. They didn't appreciate what it meant to this country. They thought it would be uh, dangerous and terribly expensive and all this, that sort of thing. Very reluctant to take it. An Irish engineer went to Germany and he brought the idea of the Shannon scheme with him to Germany and he asked Simon Schuker to look at the scheme that he had proposed. So they uh, tailor made it to suit the uh, River Shannon. Then uh, he brought back the idea after discussing it with Siemens and he sold it to the Irish government at the time. And then there was a lot of people had a, a mistaken kind of an idea that uh, it was going to be uh, that uh, people would be electrocuted and killed and everything with this electricity and uh, even now they thought that there'd be an air board in the country. With the wires. You know that when they'd pitch on the wires that they'd be all electrocuted. They didn't understand it, you see. Siemens Schuchert Bohr Union were the name of the company um, that they carried out the works. And Siemens Schuchert supplied the machinery, the generators, 
uh, for the station. They, they carried out all the engineering aspect uh, to the scheme, but the majority of the workforce were Irish. But the working conditions were extremely difficult. People really were out in all conditions. The type of work that was involved in excavating and removing material from all along the site was uh, very you know, difficult. My father supplied the milk to the German people that they had huts, they were all... In fact, I had a couple of snaps, but I couldn't lay my hand on them now today, of Germans, and one man was hit, her puffer, her puffer is his name, and he was an engineer there, and he used to visit us up to our house, and his wife and a little girl, and we used to give the milk to them and 10 or 12 more families. The Shannon scheme itself was of huge benefit to the working class people who uh, got, got employment there and at a time when there was very little employment. There's hardly a family in the village or the immediate area that didn't have somebody working on the scheme at one stage or another. It trained guys, um, made skilled workers of people in the area and uh, they went on to other employment from that. So that was a huge positive impact, was the employment it gave. The coming of electricity to the, the whole area at that time was a thing of immense importance to the place, as it was to the whole country. The places that before were dark corners in a room were Sorry. immediately illuminated, you know, and it was something that it was, we were in awe at, at, at the whole thing like you know and you know it progressed from there then it of course to uh, the electrical gadgets that came with electricity you know it changed the whole lifestyle and the, the living conditions of people in, in Ireland and especially in rural Ireland. A lot of people at the time were afraid uh, of the electricity obviously rumours went around the way it could burn you in your beds and set fire to the house and of course, electricity at the time was only a light bulb. So it was completed in 1929. And we, we, didn't, we didn't get to supply until 40. We were the very last. Well, I suppose if you look at the, the downside of it, the effect it had on the countryside, I suppose there is some loss. But of course, no, you, you never have a gain without having some losses. But I think overall, for the area and for the country um, at large, it was a great project. There were others, of course, then who, you know, were involved in the river and were making their livelihood from the river. They were the people that really had a grouch and a big one with the, the Shannon scheme and all it sort of entailed. You know, and you can put, I suppose, at the top of that list, you can put the, the fishing. We're looking at the power station and the hydroelectric scheme in relation to salmon and how it affected the Shannon salmon and the Shannon fisheries. And if you can imagine that there's two thirds of the Shannon actually come down here through the power station, through the turbines, and re-enters the Shannon about a mile downstream, you'll find there's a powerful surge of water coming off the tail race, which is two thirds and it only leaves a third on the old system. So because of that, salmon will follow the stronger surge of water. If we look here to the tower, that's a fish pass. And it's a fish lift. The fish will actually swim in and the water will build up because they'll close the gate and the fish can swim out the top into the headrest and get access to the upper shannon. But the trouble is, um, it's not just fish for the Upper Shannon that will come in here. You'll have fish for the Mulcair and the old system as well. So that's, that's one of the, the downsides of harnessing a river. And um, fishermen for a long time, uh, the, the, the hydroelectric scheme has been a bone of contention as to how it affected salmon and salmon fisheries. And um, the ESB have done their best to counteract it by having a hatchery upstream on the old system at Partine. And they have a very um, progressive um, stocking program which tries to offset 
and create a balance. This is the famous Castle Connell salmon fishery and it's just a few miles downstream from O'Brien's Bridge. And O'Brien's Bridge, for example, benefited from the amount of fish that spawned here on this fishery. And if we look here to the right hand side of the channel, you can see a field with trees growing on it. Now, these were the original famous spawning grounds of the Shannon. Now, if you look at the center channel, um, you can see that two walls have been built to try and hold water on a center channel. And if those walls weren't there, you'd have no flow because the water would be spread out across the shallows. I'd have to say that we're looking here at the most famous spawning grounds on the Shannon that are now dried up as a result of the Shannon scheme. If we look here now, we're actually out onto the old riverbed. And this, this, ha this has been untouched since the water dropped off of it. But here we have an example. Um, you could describe that now as, as a fish lie. So if you could imagine some guy fishing a bait out across this original waterway and a fish in here actually in this little lie, I mean, more than likely, he wouldn't even see your bait or be attracted towards it. So it's, 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 I suppose it's unique to be able to actually come out onto a riverbed and see um, how rough a riverbed can be in certain places with the stones, the little pools, and then you have the water flowing overhead. So all of this area would have held salmon in pre-Shannon scheme days. We're standing on top of the island and we're looking upriver at the Shannon. And all we have here is a center channel. And to the left and to the right, the, the, the riverbed has dried up. But even with the center channel, all of those weirs are man-made. And they were built for one purpose, to actually hold water on those little pools up along there for angling purposes. If those weirs weren't there, for example, the water would be running off them and you'd have no water levels. And that's how um, some of the Castle Connell fishery was restored for angling purposes, by building such weirs and by managing the water that remained after the Shaneski. So this fishery now has taken on a new landscape. And these weirs, although man-made, have enhanced the general landscape of the river and indeed have beautified it. And this fishery would be fished by people from all over Europe and indeed native anglers from different parts of Ireland. And that's why it's so important also to O'Brien's Bridge because we have a number of guest houses in O'Brien's Bridge and anglers who come for salmon fishing stay in some of these guest houses and they would avail of these particular angling pools. O'Brien's Bridge really is a fisherman's paradise. Um, he, he can fish for salmon, pike and coarse fish. Now, there are a, a large amounts uh, of all type of fish in the river. It's very accessible. With the new walks developed, uh, it also lends itself to easy fishing off the bank. Well, the walkways were, were originally the, the old towpaths that the, the horse-drawn barges would use. The horses would use that, that as a towpath to pull the barges along the old canal system. That was before the Shannon scheme, of course. So life was very much different at that time. A number of years ago, as part of a heritage project, we restored the old tow pads, paths along the walk and made a, a walkway along by the Shannon there. We restored some of the arches and the bridges there. And today it's a great amenity walk for people living in the village and people coming into the village again. There's an upstream uh, and a downstream. Well, the Heritage Walkway um, isn't complete because, and I, I think this is, this is great for us as a little community, because the fact that we developed a section of walkway from here down to the Erna Canal, which would be a distance about two and a half miles, um, we, we showed a way and we inspired actually two semi-state bodies like Shannon Development and Waterways Ireland, and they have taken a lead off of the work we have put into this and they have now um, started a project which will eventually take this walkway all the way to Limerick City. Already 
uh, village of Tunlara, which is about two miles downstream, is linked to O'Brien's Bridge. And this is a tremendous amenity because people will be able to walk from one village to the other without touching on a road through what, what is an unspoilt habitat of wildlife, river life, and it's truly unique. And I remember the walkway when we opened it first being described as one of the most important walkways in Clare. So we're very proud of that. Another project that we're in the process, our, our present project in fact, is the restoration of a, a 12th century Hiberno-Romanesque oratory on Inishlaski Island, which is just a little bit downstream here. Uh, it, it's, it's an island on the Lower Shannon, and that oratory would have been a local church at one time. And it's in ruins now, and we're in the, in the process of restoring it as part of our next heritage project. Over the past 12 months since I've become uh, aware and since I've become their local representative it's been, a it's been a pleasure to be able to deal and work with the people involved. I think uh, it's acknowledged not only from me as a representative but also by uh, officials of Clare County Council. Uh, the hard work and the commitment given by the people on, of the Community Council in O'Brien's Bridge I think what has been achieved to date is a wonderful, wonderful uh, tribute to the people and to their commitment and effort. Not every area in, in County Clare has the facilities and the, the natural amenity that O'Brien's Bridge have, such as the River Shannon. But indeed, if it's only for the enthusiasm, the commitment and the, the will to see a project through, I think that, that in itself, if, 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 if anybody wants to, to, to see that come through, they need to go no further than the committee and the people of O'Brien's Bridge. And the bridge that gave us a past to ponder is centuries old and twelve arches wide. Down below, the swans sail under, then out of its shadow and into the light. There's a river that flows like no other river winding its way to the sea the river is mine and i don't mind saying no one can take this old river from me the river is mine and i don't mind saying no one can take this old river from me